So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is a post lunch session, so napping session. No? <laughs> I know uh, when I was uh, used to sit in the other side. Post lunch session means okay. So <laughs> let it be a little interactive so that all I, all of us can they are listening to you. Uh, today, in my presentation, I shall try to discuss how to write a, I mean, technically, how to write a uh, paper at the same time, how to write your thesis. And I've jot down a few uh, points, I mean, common mistakes, which we used to do while writing English or thesis. Maybe many of you or most of you are aware with these mistakes. Still then, for general presentation, I have to narrate. And my presentation regarding thesis writing or paper writing is general type presentation. Obviously, it will vary from discipline to discipline. Again, from topic to topic, even from topic to topic. And my request is that, so if you have a thesis in mind, please come forward. If you don't wish to disclose your exact title, nothing to be worried, related title, or with some variation of the title, you can explain so that uh, we can discuss what should be the uh, chapter division or what should be the points of consideration like this. In that case, it will be, it will be like a, a case study presentation type of things. So this is uh, a request from my part. How many of you are from Department of Education? Is there anybody in physical mode? You are from, okay. What's your name, please? Jahangira, okay. So, before, uh, before uh, going to follow the slides, let us have some idea about the systematic steps in research. What should be the systematic steps? Actually, first of all, you have to know the problem, actually problem of the area which you are going to study. Problem means not the pinpointed exact topic topic. It means it's broader canvas on which you are going to draw or write your thesis. In our subject, it is called Akuba pattern. So you have to learn the broader terms, the narrower terms, related terms, equivalent terms of all the concepts you are going to uh, write or you are going to deal with during your thesis or okay now i'm uh, try to tell my uh, talking without any Support system without any micro system. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, no problem. I have a oh, mic. Oh, mic. <laughs> I feel like I prefer to talk in free mode. Okay, then. So, if, please, if you have any article in mind or thesis in mind, Rishi, what is your uh, idea about your uh, thesis title? Biography of one Buddhist. One Buddhist. Okay. Monk, Buddhist monk. Is Indian or? He's actually he's from Bhutan, but he converted to Buddhism. He converted to Buddhism and he's living in a, I mean, what is called? Gumpa or whatever is uh, 
So look, look the variation. He is planning. I mean, planning to uh, study on a particular portion of uh, a Buddhist monk. Uh, so in that case, in that case, if you plan to, uh, you have to plan about this thing, no? So before in thesis, thesis writing or in even article writing, we move from general to specific. We move from general to specific, from macro to micro, from more wider, more extension. As soon as we move towards the thesis, extension decreases, but in, intention increases. As soon as we move from the thesis, extension decreases, but intention increases. So, first of all, you have to study the Buddhist, uh, I mean, uh, Tibetan literature in general the Tibetan perspective in general, and the position of Tibetan uh, Buddhist religion in the overall perspective of religion, its originality. Uh, and side by side, you have to study Tibetan and its correlation with other religions. Uh, these are the broader perspectives. Then slowly you have to come such kind of things, such kinds of gumbas, such kinds of monks, and Ultimately, you have to, and, and ultimately, you have his contribution to that, whether his contribution. So, this kind of from Pacific to narrow, you have to come back. Okay. So, not only the Pacific person, but also the broader perspective of that person, you have to study. Not only that Pacific, where he was born, what, what he was doing, where he gave lectures, that is, that is very micro. But you have to draw the first, all the overall campus, canvas, then you have to draw his uh, picture and his, his biography. So, real, related areas of study. And my second point is to, you have to start, go through the related area of study. That means, in this case, suppose he is studying on a particular monk, say X. So, not only X, related religion concept of X, Y, Z, you have to also go through. He has to also go through his originality of that religion. He has to also study the spread of that religion. He has to also study also if the religion is being narrowed down. He has, he has to also study the re religious position in the political system. Because Buddhist, Chinese, uh, China, India-China conflict, India-China perspective, India-Tibetan conflict, India perspective and its spread, and Dalai Lama Ji, and Tar, his tradition, his disciples, and his uh, speeches. You have to go through all these connotations also. So that is the different uh, related area of study. I am not Buddhist specialist. Still then, uh, just for knowing from his uh, topic, I am trying to say something. Review, you have to review literature. That is more, more important. Then whether, what is biography? In broader sense, again from broader to never. What is biography? What is biography of religious person? How it is it comes to the Buddhism? So biographical study also is necessary. Not only the biography of a particular person, but also other biography in general. How biography is drawn? In, 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 in many a times, it is, it is narrated in direct sense as biography, but many a times it is in a storytelling mode. Biography is also stored. Many oh, those who are in Bengali, they can study Chele Bella. Chele Bella of Rabindranath Tagore. It has an English translation also, My Boyhood Days. So, Chele Bella in uh, Rabindranath is also a biography, but Jolpare Patanore is not a biography in direct sense. That's not a biography in direction. So, again, I, you have to study these kind of things to know the biography writing styles also. Not direct all the times, what kind of biography we used to study in the newspaper, born, such, death, such, uh, write such article. So, that is not the biographical sketch in all respective, particularly when we are talking about a religious topic. 
particular level you are talking about a bomb. So then collecting data, it is for all of you, and analyze this data in appropriate problem. So before collecting the data, you have to have an idea about the problem. Then only you can uh, focus or pinpoint for particular set of data you require for your research. Should I repeat this point? So you have to, first of all, you have to have an idea about the problem you are dealing with. Then you have to, for example, if you plan to uh, collect data by questionnaire method, then you have to draw that, prepare the questionnaire. And questionnaire, again, questionnaire should be through different methods. Questionnaire, you draw, directly draw a questionnaire and submit it to uh, your uh, supervisor and he, he said yes. Again, drawing questionnaire or planning questionnaire or write, uh, prepare questionnaire is a, again a technique. Again, 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 a thing. Then, in that case, also you have to you have to study the questionnaire for same kind of study your procedures has developed. That is that is that is also uh, important. For example, if somebody is uh, studying the reading habit of uh, modern generation uh, students, if it is a study the reading habit, then. If for the such or, or or modern ICT services offered by the university library, if it is your area of study, modern ICT services offered by your university libraries, obviously for that you the stakeholders, we have to collect data from you the stakeholders for this this study, and for this particular study, what questionnaire, if anybody done earlier or related areas, what type of questionnaire they have developed for. Collecting data. Then, then, then that will also enlarge your idea so that your questionnaire may be pinpointed. Your data is sufficient enough to supplement, support your thesis. Obviously, drawing conclusion and making make it generalized. What should be the ideal criteria for a good research? Your purpose of research should clearly be defined. What is the purpose? For his case, if his purpose is the contribution of XYZ to Buddhist religion, contribution of XYZ to spread of Buddhism, contribution of XYZ to substantiate some ideas of Buddhism, specific part. So this kind of things, purpose must be clearly. Purpose means your hypothesis, Purpose means your research question. Purpose means your statement of problem. That means the reason of research. And process must be detail. Process must be narrated in detail. Process means research methodology. And again, for determining your research methodology, you have to study, or you have to go through literature. That is very much important. And please note that all the times you are following the research methodology followed by others, I mean, others person in their literature, already published literature, you can develop your own method also. That is important. From their experience, obviously putting proper citation for their work, you can, any question? You can develop your methodology also. And it says design, you must thoroughly have to apply. This, please note one thing. Visualizing your thesis, when you can close your eyes, you can see from chapter one, uh, introduction, 1.1 introduction, introduction of introductory part, and finally recommendation for further research, and finally reference and bibliography, and finally appendices. If you can visually see, visually see by closing your eyes, eyes the entire thesis, your work is half done. Your work is half done. That's my experience. So, Shopno Dekha, from A to Z of a, of a thesis, your work is half done. As soon as you can visualize your thesis, and this, this kind of visualization will arrive how you can visualize these things? 
if you go through more theses, if you uh, go through some more theses, I mean, already promises, submitted an awarded thesis, then you can uh, see, you can visualize your thing. And as soon as you can visualize seeing that for introductory part, I have this segment. For uh, review literature, I, I shall have to do this segment. And I have to write in this way. I shall come later on on those parts. For research methodology, this is the things. And these are the probable uh, uh, inter analysis and interpretation of data. This may be probable uh, findings and outcomes. Uh, this is the research gap which I couldn't fill up that will come under finally under finding and conclusion. So as soon as you can visualize this thing, I'm again repeating. So please visualize your research. I mean, final output, final product. A person who can clearly visualize his final product, finished product, would submit it earlier. Obviously, we have talked a lot about ethics, huh? philosophy department, and myself. Then limitation must, must frankly be revealed. Every, please look, another, another important point. 100% perfection during submission of research is not possible. I'm repeating. 100% perfection during submission of research is not possible because research is a lifelong process. Research is a lifelong process. Those 100% perfect, perfectionists could not be able to submit that. You may differ uh, from me. A lot of controversy may arise from my this statement, but I am saying it from my own experience. Because it is not possible. This is a lifelong process. After submitting, after getting award, do your research. Do further continue it for delete or something, DSC or whatever, maybe. Publish a lot of papers on your uh, subjects or related subjects. But 100% satisfaction, uh, that is not possible. That's why, that's why in every research, there is limitation or delimitation. In the education, they used to call it uh, delimitation. And, and there is keen difference between limitation and delimitation. Delimitation is self-imposed limitation. Self-imposed limitation. And this self-imposed limitation is everywhere, not in thesis, but also in research articles. For example, you have uh, taken a, uh, a population of uh, village of four, four Santal villages in, uh, residing nearby uh, Santinika. For example, there are 500 residents. It is not possible to collect data from all the residents. You de determine the policy of a sample, uh, sample, but that sample must represent the inverse characteristic, characteristics of the entire population. I told you earlier, earlier days. So you have to clearly reveal, reveal that. That out of this total population in Baliganj, uh, Kalipara, and other, I have taken such uh, houses, a random sampling method, and they think they represent the entire characteristics of it. And analysis, obviously, proper should be proper and safe. Now, is there any question? What is your topic? Education. Oh, you are from physical ed. Naturally, one, one faculty of education is uh, calling me many a time that my scholars are there, so something like that. Okay. Now the parts of a paper. Ultimate object, ultimate object is to outputs. One output is publishing papers, and another output is submitting the thesis. These are the two outputs. Ultimate object we used to dream right now. And you have for fulfill the objectives, you have to sell through some stages, huh? some hurdles. So what are the parts of an ideal paper? Have you wrote any paper, anybody? You, you wrote? Yes, yes please uh, say your experience and how, what was it, please. So, far. So, so, so loudly, so that everybody can listen to it. So I have written two papers of my MSA thesis. The... Which subject do you belong? Agriculture extension. Okay, then. So what is it? What was the title of the thesis? What was the subtitle? How where it is published? How you wrote the paper? I mean, what are the not in details? What are the segments of that paper? What conclusion you come to? 
all such kind of things. Uh, what was the title of the thing? Sir? Perception of groundnut growers towards modern communication media in Saurashtra region. Okay. Ground, ground, ground. Groundnut growers. Groundnut growers. Okay. Yeah, he has uh, published a paper on groundnut growers. Padam. Okay. So, a more absurdism. Look, his paper is not groundnut not uh, grower. He has mentioned particular regime. That modest reason, because other that is the limitation he is imposed in his title. Ground uh, growers, uh, farmers. This could be a title. As soon as he has narrowed the co geographical coverage, so the ground growers of Bengal region and Maharashtra region is the, the, the first. Then have you mentioned the, the specific time frame of you, in your title? Your, your, your study during which period? No, no, no. I'm not talking about your, your course of study. I mean, uh, the year. Huh? 2020, from 18 to 20. So, this is another limitation. Or this is self imposed limitation because he has taken 2000 up to 2020. Maybe he has uh, passed his master's in agriculture. Uh, extension in uh, 2020. So he has imposed two kinds of limitation. One, in case of geographical coverage, huh? the monastery is in, and another, the time frame. Next. Sir, I have uh, submitted my abstract to one of the, which in which I have taken the membership of a, a society of extension in Gujarat. No, just just uh, tell what were the facets. For example, your name was there. You, you, are, you are the single author or your supervisor was there. You, you, you are the first author you are, or second author? I'm second author. We are second author. So, uh, corresponding author or principal author, he has sacrificed and it, is, it goes to his guide. I coined the word sacrifice. Okay. Now, next. Because this is, this is, this is an Explain. As, as soon as I say the word sacrifice, then you have to decide when you publish a paper whether the first author will be you or your supervisor. In case, in case it was his supervisor. Then? Title of the research, then of course, then my spell ID. Okay, your affiliation. Affiliation, your affiliation and uh, that, that I shall come. Uh, your affiliation. Then? Then abstract. Hmm. Okay, then. The keywords. Um, okay. The introduction and uh, my objectives, my methodology and uh, results and discussion. Anybody of you have published any paper, physical education? Not yet. Anybody? Have you mind in the uh, mind uh, for a paper? Any idea that I, I, I shall write a paper on this? This kind of things? Please come. I send a manuscript. Hmm. On uh, title is uh, that uh, topic is end to end encryption. Hmm? End to end encryption. What's the middle of it? End to end encryption. Hmm. This is. So, uh, uh, many thank you. You are from which department? Computer science. Computer science. Okay. So, that, that has not yet been passed. That is under the in the review. <coughs> you are also from agriculture, no? Yeah. Rural study. Have you published the paper? Or not? Okay, then. Then I am kind. So a parts of a thesis has already told your friend has already published the paper. He has narrated the word. First of all, the title. Colon subtitle. As soon as you use the colon after the title, that means next is subtitle. Subtitles many a time specifies the title. Subtitle many a time narrows the title. Subtitle many a times pinpointed the title. Obviously, it may widen the title also. Narrow, even widen the title also. Okay.
audio thing traveling buddhist monks colon xyz xyz contribution that means look traveling buddhist monks the broader concept colon name will not disclose i don't know xyz contribution that means traveling buddhist monks means lot of travels uh, monks travel from there and all over there and when after colon as soon as he mentioned that xyz contribution that means he has narrowed down the entire thing in his software then author or author's name there may be one author two author three author or more than more than two author name and their chronology comes according to the, their credential their position their contribution to this paper and every time the contributor affiliation may be superscript author's name suppose x y z superscript a second author is abc superscript b third author c 1 to 3 superscript c then abc is narrated that he is associate professor department of agriculture extension if he is second he is the research scholar department of extension and and the department school address that is called affiliation and third i know many of you knows this no so many of our are is it, is it i should i say in this way or i, I should be free sir bo पर्टिकुलर Uh, technical jargon or technical word i am not going through still then my thing is that yesterday or day after yesterday in my last presentation at one point of time i told that in a laboratory 10 people or 10 students are working under a supervisor under a professor and whenever everybody publishes a paper or the 10 paper usually uh, let, let us consider the 15 papers published in a year in 15 papers if the ten contributors are all the time there how how will explain it so every every person working in the particular lab published 15 papers every year can you understand my point should it be should it be no because i'm i'm talking it about lab because i i am talking it about lab particularly because this kind of things published from the lab also mainly mainly from the <laughs> laboratories so if it is done if i have i i can uh, oh. i'm at a class here also if this is done the credential of each and everybody including the supervisor increases or decreases actually i am not i will won't mention the lab name and the department and other things i am giving a concrete example i i shall not mention so when you give credential or the status of a person in a paper he or she must have some contribution for it for example if a botanist take help from a statistician for statistical interpretation of his paper he or she is named soon come as an author at the end of the paper in the acknowledgement part he can give thanks thanks for sir xyz department of xyz for his guidance in developing the statistical formula or calculating the statistical formulas like that 
So and and please remember, it's a mutual mutual thing. It's a mutual thing. For example, first author, second author, or that must be a mutual thing. So including more author in a particular paper, particularly in social science, this thing doesn't matter. Whenever a question of second author arises, if the research is on interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary you are interdisciplinary. Interdisciplinary means biophysics. If somebody is doing research on physics and biology, the common inter intersection is biophysics part. If the paper is on biophysics, some must have contribution on biology or some have contribution on physics. In that case, both of them must get the position of authors. Or if it is uh, intra, intra subject things, for example, white blood cell in red or white blood cell in vertebrate or invertebrate mammals or animals, sort of way. White blood cell in vertebrates. Then again, two, two, two branches in the same discipline, same subject, that is geology. That's an interdiscipline. So if it is interdiscipline or interdiscipline, then question of double contribution arises. Obviously, supervisor is considered separate because he's uh, guiding you. Need to. So then affiliation and abstract, I told earlier that abstract must clearly be defined what you got. What is the method? Obviously in a not cell, in one or two sentences, and what, what is the findings? Keywords told, many a time it is called descriptor. Huh? Then introduction, review literature, objective of the study, methodology, analysis, interpretation, discussion, conclusion, notes and references, definition of technical terms. Many a time in scientific research, definition of technical terms is required. And please note, I shall come these points at the end because I have no slide on these points. Please note, Many a times we, we use the broader term. For example, IDBI, Industrial Development Bank of India. So once you write IDBI, then Industrial Development Bank of India, then within first bracket use IDBI. If you once used in the introductory part, I mean in your abstract or in any other part, second time you can use IDBI, not Industrial Development Bank. That is the abbreviator. But please, please use months so that your reader, you're guiding your reader that I have used the abbreviated form IDBI for my article. Many a times, particularly the young scholars, they start, oh, they take the assumption that it is IDBI, everybody should, everybody knows. It. That is not the case. That is not the case. For example, you took sample of 100. For this study, you have uh, took, uh, surveyed 100 people. So please give right within first bracket n equal to 100. That is, that is particularly about science. n equal to 100. That means you made 100 uh, people for get this kind of thing. These are the things, these are the very much technical things. But in research publication, this is very much important. And so, uh, any, 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 mm, any uh, question, anything about the, uh, I mean, maybe some points are repetition of my earlier uh, talks. Uh, still, then, about uh, paper writing. I shall come some uh, common errors or common point, checkpoints later I'm at the end of my presentation. If you have any question, anything, please get free. Otherwise, I'm talking, don't let it be interactive.
Okay. Have you uh, seen any thesis? I mean, in thesis in total. The book, the binding, the GitHub. Huh? Have you seen? Those who have not yet, I'm not talking about going through the entire thesis because that may not be related to your topic. You may not be interested on that uh, particular uh, problem, but just going through a thesis, how it is. Uh, on that day, you start your dreaming uh, that you will submit after three years, something you will submit this thing and you will get uh, award for this. So uh, just uh, look at, uh, go through a thesis, how it is just, Browse that is, that is that is important because that will encourage you. That will give you an idea that this is a finished product. I have to sum it after, say, three years. And if you go through a thesis physically, then you will find that it has three parts. Basically, it has three parts. There are preliminary pages, actual thesis, and then and what are the preliminary pages? No. I, I, I have started my writing from the cover. Okay, I have started it from cover. So this is a cover page. This is a, suppose this is a hard copy thesis, hard bound. You have made a cover page for it. Huh? So what, what will be in the cover page? Many times we, the library professional used to call it dust cover or jacket. We used to call it dust cover or jacket. So what will be in the cover page? Title, including subtitle of your thesis, name of the scholar, yeah. Name of the institution, institution emblem, emblem name and institution name. Actually, I didn't get much time. Otherwise, I had a plan to uh, take snaps of these pages and show you. That would may, might have been better option. Next time, if I get a chance or something, fine. Then come title page. Actually, title page and cover page almost same. Again, in the title page, title. Candidate's name, supplement, that is not in the title page. Look, statement, statement is there. So these thesis is submitted in the Department of Physical Education, Vinay Bhavan, for award the degree of awarded Doctor of Philosophy in Physical Education under the supervision of XYZ. This is a statement is given in the title page. And this is optional dedication. And in another page, suppose one may dedicate this uh, to his uh, father, to his beloved one. One may dedicate it to the entire community. One may dedicate it to his children who have sacrificed their valuable time for this thesis. If you are a married person, you have, have time for them to con conduct your thesis. So you can dedicate to your kids for sacrificing their time. And declaration. Candidate has also a declaration there that the thesis entitled such as such submitted to the Department of indo tibetan Studies for award. Doctor of Philosophy. This thesis has not been submitted elsewhere for any degree. That is important. That is the declaration of the candidate. That this is the original things and you have not submitted it elsewhere for any kind of degrees. And obviously, next certificate from the supervisor or supervisor, just in a university pad, in university pad, you will give a certificate, certificate gold, Again, there are styles in writing these things. Bold, underline, font size, every, every, in everywhere guidance is possible. Certificate, this is to certify that, Mr. X, under my direct, or under our direct supervision, submitted this thesis entitled 
is worthy to be awarded as doctor of philosophy he has not submitted the thesis or any major part of the thesis for any kind of degree or awards else this certificate is mandatory from the supervisor and then comes preface preface in a very short hello what, what do you want to i am talking i am asking you sir i am asking you the busy in uh, some taking snap i think they will share it no they are sharing the slides or not sir you have checklist okay then if if, if any mistakes is there please uh, tell me so that so that i can correct or rectify myself no that is that is that is also possible no that is also possible so preface and then acknowledgement generally in three four paragraphs the researcher acknowledge some people first of all supervisor i thankfully acknowledge the contribution and concern guiding and sacrificing his valuable time professor x y z has contributed towards completion of this thesis para one if there is co, co supervisor you can include him in the particular para then second para to library or laboratory if it is science based you can you should recognize you may recognize library if you get any that been and first but not all but not least your parents because they are your, they, they are the inspiration your inspiration no? and so ultimately it's end with them look abstract as synopsis that is when you submit a thesis the entire thesis is there but a abstract is of the thesis also submitted to the examination department you know the procedures how it is comes to what it is done how it is done through the different committees and have you any idea don't have so with submission of your thesis you have to submit a abstract also because because <laughs> many many universities it is not any uh, universal to in many universities first of all this give the abstract to the exam whether your c is convenient in this area in everywhere his opinion where is he agree to evaluate that is or not otherwise is it submitted to the examiner for evaluation and after few days he said sorry that that should be the case in written statement you or she agrees then this is soft copy of this nowadays soft copy is also sent so uh, then only this will be sent for evaluation so you have to submit it a summary or synopsis that is a content on the content of thesis actually when you present a paper in a seminar also time is not there the initial speaker the chairman the invited speaker they will start gossiping in the dash they are generally old 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 people they take the mic and they don't bother about others time that is the everybody is feeling they don't bother about others time they don't doesn't care what you are listening or not but when your time will come to present the paper you will get 5 minutes seven minutes is it not and eh? is it not and the organizer also will praise that laying about the bio radar it is available in the net by about his bio radar his current cl is contribution so that he is interested to develop a report with him no? but when your turn come to present the paper will get five minutes so minutes so within this short period of time you have to what i am talking about it is my uh, on the basis of my experience please, please uh, don't you may, may disagree with me but this is a according system and you have to uh, have finished my life you have to go through this process no? 
So you will get five to seven minutes. You have prepared a long uh, uh, three thousand words uh, article. That's what I am. Why I am uh, telling so much story. Within that five to seven minutes, you have to present your paper. Which part you will prepare? Which? Ah, uh, yes. That you have to before going to any seminar for presenting your paper. You have to keep in mind that I know I I shall not. Uh, 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 I will not permit me to say introduction. Suppose you have prepared twenty five slides. Prepare one slide of one uh, thing of your article in twenty five slides, and prepare another uh, slides for the same topic with seven slides or eight slides. Omit introduction introductory part. Objectives. Methodology, finding, conclusion. Just five, six slides. Because you have five minutes, seven minutes. That is important. That is important. Similarly, in your abstract, similarly in your abstract, if to, huh? hello? Is somebody trying to talk or it is noise? Objective, hypothesis, methods, and findings. And Significance implication of findings. This should be included in the summary of your thesis. Or what should not be included, I shall come in later. Then come table of contents. In table of contents, for example, one introduction. Introduction has seven seven facets. Introduction, statement of part, uh, uh, statement of the problem, uh, significance of important terms, so something like that. So one. Then introduction 1.1. That means first segment of chapter one. I'm repeating one introduction, 1.1 introduction of introductory chapter, 1.2 statement of the problem, 1.3, sorry, 1.2 scope and coverage of the issues, 1.3 problem, statement of the problem, like this. Similarly, list of tables also. You may have more than one table, more than uh, five tables, ten, seven each, each chapter. Then table numbering should be in that way. List of tables, 1.1 .1 means first table in chapter one. 5.3 means fifth table in chapter five. This should be the numbering tree. This is a common thing, still I'm repeating. Similarly, list of figures. In every chapter, you have to be figure one, figure two, figure three. Again, chapter one, figure, chapter two, figure, like that. Again, the list of abbreviation, particularly in science. Please remember, list of abbreviation, it will be from A to Z sequence. Dictionary format. In dictionary, it is A to Z. So list of abbreviation will be A to Z, number one. Number two, I have explained earlier that as I have given a list of abbreviations, so I'm not mentioning that full name once in the type, uh, in the main text, I shall just know. Your supervisor is not supposed to go through the list of uh, abbreviation and then come to the, uh, evaluate your chapter one to three. So list, if there is list of uh, list of abbreviation at the beginning, you please give once, at least once in each chapter, the full name and is abbreviated from within half time. Many scholars are those that I've given a list of abbreviations in the uh, uh, preliminary pages. So why should I give? But once give. That will be easy for your examiner to evaluate that. Then list of plates, if it is there. This, is, this may be one title page. Just I was trying to, uh, without taking snap and trying to. For example, Shongit Bhavan Institute of Dance, Music and Drama, Library, Vishwavarate, User Study. Suppose it is a thesis. Look, Shongit Bhavan, Institute of Music, Dance and Drama. Why within past decade, Institute of Music, Dance and Drama? Because we know Shongit Bhavan is the Institute of the Music, but an examiner in Bangladesh, or examiner in Monipur may not know that Sungit Bhavan is in student dance, drama, and all of it. That's why its clarification, even in the thesis, even in the research article, should be there. A user study. By XYZ means your name. 
This is submitted to the Department of University of for award of doctor uh, degree of Doctor of Philosophy in then subject under guidance of professor's name, university logo and university's name. This should be the model title. Any question or any doubt about the preliminary pages? Can you visualize it? I'm, I am using the word repeatedly because that, that is important. Then come to the body of the thesis. Look, look, please look the numbering technique. What I, I was I trying to narrate in words. Now it is in figures. Chapter one is introduction. Chapter one, chapter one introduction. Then what, what, should, be, what should be incorporated in, cha in chapter one? The scholar, what the scholar is doing about. The entire chapter is what you are going doing, what you are going to do, what you are going to narrate in the forthcoming chapters. That will come in chapter one. That starts your journey. And you are guiding your supervisor to the path. Sir, the examiner, sir, this is my path. Now, here we are at the beginning. And this is what I am going to do. I am planning to do. The entire central focus of chapter one is this. Then the segments are there, introduction, statement of the problem, definition analysis. Look, definition analysis is not mandatory. If the problem is related to more technical terms, then definition analysis is required, otherwise not. Then objective of the study, research question, need significance, conclusion, notes and references. Any, 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 any do you want to say something? Ah. Third one is definitional analysis. That means if a technical term has been used in the title, or many technical terms have been used in different components in the, of the thesis, then one in the beginning chapter, one should define the technical terms. Because the general reader may or may not know their technical terms. Or a technical term may have different connotations. A connotation may vary from discipline to discipline, subject to subject. So in a broader perspective, you are narrating the or defining the terms. For example, if your research is visual education, if your research is effect of pollen on this respiratory problem or solution of practice of jugas to reduce pollen effect on respiratory problems, if it is your thesis. Do you know Santini Gatan Chatin tree and other things are there? They have a large number of pollen and they cause respiratory problem as well and all the things in this area is higher. So your research is like that. What kind of yoga if you start to practice here? Yeah, that may reduce our pollen effects on respiratory problems. So look, what is pollen may not be known, known to your examiner even. Or what are the specific kind of pollen in the year of Santinikatan, maybe chatting or other things. He may not be familiar with the scientific terms of chatting. Chatting may be local name, but it has a globing, uh, global scientific uh, uh, terminology. As soon as I use the uh, word, uh, I, I don't know. The particular uh, term for chatting is scientific name. Then everybody can understand. So in your thesis, you have to use, uh, I mean, uh, define, sorry, what are you talking about? Uh, Technical term. You have to narrate this technical term for your particular thesis. Now it is clear why why in may not in all thesis. 
But why in many theses a narration of technical terms is required? It is, I told earlier that not mandatory for any kind of thesis. It depends upon thesis to thesis. I think now it is clear, no? Yes, 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 constructors. Uh, actually, uh, many, uh, I am coming. Actually, uh, uh, it is a uh, old, uh, I mean, terminology not used in modern day physicists, but I prefer this one. That is chapter -ized. That is chapter -ized. Technical term, chapter -ized. That means what you are doing to, uh, what the scholar is doing about, that means in chapter one, you are also guiding the examiner, you are also narrating, the, uh, my forthcoming chapter is this. this. In, a, uh, in a format, I have just uh, narrated, uh, explained five chapters, but it may go to 10 chapters. Again, it depends upon the uh, title. So here, chapterization you are also doing. And finally, conclusion. Then comes visual literature. The common segments. <laughs> the common segments in visual literature, particularly in social science, what is known, what is unknown. And you are doing or trying to fill up this gap. We are trying to penetrate between known and unknown area. No? Known is already published document. Unknown is, unknown is totally unknown. So your path is in between known and unknown. It is not possible for you to unearth the entire unknown things. That is not possible. Entire unknown things is not possible to explain the, in a single thesis. So your path is in between known and unknown. And in social science uh, physicists, four segments are common. The introduction part, what, what people used to write in introduction part. They used to write that what is literature, what is literature review, and what kind of literature you have reviewed in this article, in this in this. Case. The literature review, literature is entered uh, output published on a particular area in any form, micro, macro, or any uh, format. This is literature. Yeah, what are the objects of literature review? I contacted literature review on this topic and its broader and narrower area also, so that methodology limitation can be highlighted. And for this study, I have consulted both micro and macro document. Micro document within bracket give the names of documents you have studied. Micro document within the bracket gives the name of the documents, type of documents you have studied and the resources given. Please remember, very important thing. When you gave reference to any websites in your references, please don't forget to mention date of search or date of heat. That is very, very important. Rate of search or heat. Already word of search, many times they point to word heat. Rate of search. That is very important. Because you gave, for example, I'm repeating, you gave that during your uh, educational survey, you have anywhere mentioned that Professor XYZ was the vice chancellor during this. When you submit the thesis, Maybe ABC become high sensor. Then you give wrong answer, wrong, wrong information. But if you mention the search on also, search on 20, 20th uh, March 2023, that validates your statement. If somebody inquires, yes, on 20th March 2023, it was our high sensor. But on 20th, March 2024, maybe somebody or some other side of So whenever, don't forget, whenever you refer to any websites, any information, web, web, web metric, it is called web metric, yeah? 
cyber matrix is there. There's lots of technical terms in addition are there. Please mention that data. So then introduction, then books, then journals, then web resources, then compilation. And again, there is a technique of citing or mentioning the issue reviews. One is from the latest to older. For example, book. You reviewed a book published in 2023. That will come. Next. Okay. What is the technique? If you follow APA style, surname of the author, for example, Ray, 2023, in, in his book entitled Such 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 Take Words in Print, a comparative study before and after expiry of copyright, he explained that after post copyright uh, publication, all this, 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 this is the final. Just two, three, four, five sentences. And there is a technique of writing this uh, this kind of reviews. If you go through a book, you will find that about the book, about the author. Have you seen? Have you seen the jacket of a book? Dust cover a book. In the front page cover, about the book. In the back side cover, about the author. So about the books, the author in nutshell attracts or guides or influences the Perspective users, what the book is dealing with. What the book is dealing with. So that is the, the main findings, or that is the methodology, or that is the things. So one can prepare this kind of review. Again, I, I'm not talking about you will just copy the things, but you can, first of all, without going through the entire document, first idea about the books is developed from there. So from about the books, content, then preface, this should be written without going to the entire book. That is possible. I'm talking about a shortcut method, but uh, your guide is superior. Similarly, in case of journal articles, also the abstract keywords, because it is, it is, it is in the abstract. And at the end, the references, it will be arranged alphabetically A to Z. As actually, this kind of, these, these, these things require practical things. Huh? So that, and similarly, OAB sources and other things. But please look in my presentation. In every chapter, introduction is there and conclusion is there. 1.1 is introduction and finally, conclusion. And notes and references are there. Because in chapter, particularly in social science or humanities research, many a time notes is required. Notes is required. For example, Srini Keton started his function in India 1923, February 1923, by, the first, by his first director, LKL Master. That means, then you're writing the main thesis. But who is your LKM must? Where, uh, where from he comes to India to a remote place, Srinikapan? That is not possible to write in the main text. But in notes portion, you can guide your, uh, you can lead your uh, examiner. That L LKL must was in such. He was also a agriculture graduate. He started uh, it in Srinikapan from the fund of Dorothy. Later he became Mrs. Elmas. So this, 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 this is the note. This notes section shouldn't be included in the main text. Because if, we, if I include it in the main text, then it will reduce the smooth flow or gravity of the main part. Obviously this is a technique. It's easy for somebody to tell, but it is difficult to <laughs> for practice. Then the research methodology. And in the concluding part of review of literature, what is the conclusion? What should be the conclusion in the review of literature part? That after going through all kinds of documents, be it macro and macro, micro or macro, or primary, secondary, tertiary, it is observed that studies on this disease area 
has already been conducted but no study on this particular area has been has been done yet that means you are justifying your taking the title that is the last line of chapter 2 this kind of box has been done and this is the uncultivated area that is the mother soil i am going to tilt it that is the concluding sentence of chapter 2 oh my time is up to the four hey, i am just in middle but not only middle today hard enough okay i shall finish or uh, take just 10 15 minutes from iman next week on. so then chapter 3 what is methodology research methodology introduction methodology source limitation and de uh, delimitation and citation style again here in the introductory part you have to say what is research what is research methodology and what is the difference between research method and methodology Just now and abbreviation. Method is a technique. Methodology is application of that. And sources, limitation and delimitation you have to clearly prevent. And citation style, this is important. And what citation style you are following in your thesis, whether it is APA or MLA or Chicago manual, whatever may be, you can give one two examples. And my humble submission is. If you publish two, three papers, and if it, the, the papers are worthy, and if it is published in high impact factor journals or referred journal or whatever, maybe you can cite those articles here. That means you are, in a way, influencing your supervisor. The sir, this is me who have published articles on this paper, on this area, published in such kind of reported journals. That create good impression about you. And at the same time, you can say that these kind of things. And then actually it does it, it does in a pictorial format. For example, if we follow APA style, Ray, Homa, PP, I mean, first name and second name, back at close, then ER, just put an arrow, first name of the author, second name of the author, third name of the author, the ER, ER of publication, title. So this kind of giving the entire article and Narrating that area with arrow, it justifies the things. That means you know how, how you, what you are doing, how you are uh, uh, citing your things. That creates, uh, again, good impact about your uh, methodology, your techniques of writing, and many things more. Next result and discussion. This part is what you have found, and what does it mean? What is this general implication, generalicity? That is the chapter four, that is introduction results. Please note, it is not necessary many a times we don't discuss the negative results. But that is a part of the thesis. Hello, 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 no. <laughs> And discussion, conclusion. I'm not, uh, time is not there, so <laughs> detailed discussion is not possible there. But one thing, during result and discussion, give proper numbering of your tables. As far as possible, use flowcharts. As far as possible, give pictorial presentation. I mean, diagrams. If scope is there, I'm not talking about uh literature things or something as well possible for example if in this case if it is possible that uh, he has travel uh, what he was talking about that two months he used to stay in a monk and then he used to move gumpa and he used to move so that may be graphically be presented if you present graphically that this is uh Urnachal and from there he moved to uh what is darjeeling hmm? the famous so that you can do and and 
just I'm giving an example. Geo literary movement of a literary personnel, a person, and his output relating to geo literature. That may be a paper. Geo literary movement. For example, Rabindran moved from Sandigarh to Shialda, Shialda to uh, Java, Java to you know many places. And in those places, if he moves, uh, writes article on that year, that is, is it not geo literary movement of literary person? Is it not? Will you not agree with my this term? I've just coined. Geo literary movement. He's moving. The literary personnel is moving from there. Rabindran wrote many articles from Padma board. That is on river Podda while sitting in a boat. You go through the Kabos or Rabindran many times, it is written that Podda boat. It. That may be a wonderful presentation of your things, and you can use this, uh, I mean, concept. Uh, what I've just said, the geolatory movement of a person and its relation or interpretation with it, which is publications and lectures. So chapter five is summary and conclusion. What are the possible applications of the findings? What contribution does it make to knowledge and what text? Then what you are contributing to the universe of knowledge? I told in my first or second, that is there. And what is the general application of your findings? And what next? That means research is dynamic. It is not static. You've done, finished, no. What you are planning to do, that is the recommendation for further study. The 5.4. So I, next slides are basically many a times we confused about bibliography and references. Many times. So these are related with these, uh, the differences between bibliography and references. I, I shall skip all these things. Citizen style, I should skip. Uh, I told you about that you have to submit an abstract while submitting your uh, thesis. That is important for you. Brief summary of the thesis. It is generally two, three pages. Just provide most important information. Never contain new information. You should not write any new thing in the abstract. What you have got in your thesis should be reflected there. It is basically on what, where, how. Purpose, procedures, and main findings and clear concluding remarks. And please write the abstract at last. Again, there is, there is a defense opinion, defense opinion between, between the uh, uh, scholars, whether introduction should be right at last, after conclusion, or we should start with it. So, that is, that is one kind of thing. That means after conclusion, you can visualize you've done everything. Then if you write the introduction, then it, it may be, I mean, 1.1, introduction of introduction, then it may be more. So this, this debate is there. So clear concluding remarks. So this is thing. Now in very short, I shall uh, mention some point uh, while Aborting thesis, right? Sir, before abstract slide, please see again, sir. Actually, time is short. That's why you know, <laughs> I rapidly what bullet. So just a minute, sir. Yes, please jot down. Or it will be shared to you. I think the uh, coordinator will share uh, this kind of these slides to everybody. Okay, sir. Okay. Because I have just handed over it to and they have saved it in their uh, computers. Very common things. Chapter 1 and Chapter 2. Chapter numerical 1 or Chapter O-N-E-1. That should be uniform. For example, here I wrote chapter two. Instead of these two, we can, I can write TWO2. Many times uh, we give chapter one, 
न्यूमेरिकल वन देन चैप्टर टू टी डब्ल्यू ओ टू दैट सुन यू हैव टू यूनिफॉर्म थ्रू आउट योर थी द बोल्ड एंड द फ्रंट साइज ऑफ बोल्ड फोर्स इफ द सब फैसेट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इंट्रोडक्शन टू पॉइंट वन इफ द एंटायर थी इज ट्वेल्व आई मीन फ्रंट साइज ट्वेल्व इट इज रोमन If the space is one point five, then you have to follow uniform. If you get the subfacets, for example, instead of twelve, if you give it fourteen, and make it bold, you should give the entire thesis fourteen. I mean, main theme fourteen, and it should be bold. That should be uniformly followed. It could very common things, but many a times, particularly in this computer age, when uh, uh, to prepare my thesis and submit it. Type. I mean, now this type is done by the ourselves. Awesome. Many cases and others. Instead of and others, we used to say a l, e t dot a l. That means and others, and underline those things. In somewhere you use and other in the and or o t h e other, and somewhere a l. That is not the case. That should not be the case. Uniformly, you should follow this. Many a time, in a long quotation, many a time, just uh, these are not in the slides. So just uh, before coming, uh, I try to. But I think these tips are very important. In 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 long sentences, in long quotations, we can give dot dot dot. The dot should be three and only three, not two, not three, not two. <laughs> At the beginning, it's long, long, long quotation. Hey, just, just uh, ten minutes, uh, five minutes. For example, in long quotations, when a long quotation start, it is not possible to, or you are not. Uh, uh, for long quotation. Suppose you are uh, you will like like to omit some portion that will not justify your things. Dot dot dot. Quotation quotation mark then dot dot dot. Then quotation then 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 concept comes and before finishing it again there if there is some portion of uh, quotations which you wish to omit. Dot dot dot. The three dot is important. Many a times, including the senior, they wrongly gave four dot. Many times they gave two dot, but. Three and only three dots. Uniformity of spelling must be there. In English writing, there is a British spelling and there is American spelling. You have to follow one. In Bengali, this is a Shankshot Bananvidi. People follow. You have to uniformly follow Shankshot Bananvidi. Toyri, Toyri Roy, how shoy is there? Toyri Roy, did you is there? Both are correct. You have to uniformly write by your idea, your idea, your idea. By how should you have to do it? That is important. Please avoid obsolete words in your thesis. Obsolete words. The words are not in practice. I can give wonderful example in Bengali. Fire khan, party shot, chatu kar. Nowadays, chamcha. The same word. So, if you write khair khan, Bengali, in your uh, thesis, that is not in practice. I'm not talking about the right chamcha. That is not there. But still, I mean, the same words, parisha. So, be careful. Obsolete words, please don't use. Abbreviation are talked in at length. Be careful about our punctuation because, particularly in quotation, changing of pun punctuation marks or mistakes in pun punctuation marks change the mutual mora of a quotation. If a visual shock, exclamatory marks turn into a interrogative marks, the central focus of the quotation changes. 
the entire thing changes. So be careful, particularly when you are using quotations, not only the exact words of the quotation, but also the punctuation used in its original text. In particular, and take care of punctuation in general throughout your process. Please write in passive voice. That is general mistakes we used to do. I have done this work on the basis of the findings made earlier. No, I know. The scholars intend to explain. It, is, it should be in passive voice. Direct active voice writing in, uh, I mean, in paper or even thesis. No. Hello? Deep. Please write simple sentences. Please write simple sentences. As we are not literature, man of literature, or English literature, a long sentences many a time, verbs or approbation or conjunction, we yeah. are doing mistakes. And using proper verbs, approbation, conjunction. So, Use simple sentences. On the other hand, I should suggest, I shall suggest have a long sentence. Please be careful about economy of words. Economy of words. Because please remember time is money. The person who is evaluating your thesis he has time. He's a scholarly person. He's a resource person. You see. So, what could be narrated in a nutshell? What could be explained in a two, three sentences? You made a large fire. So, it will create a negative impression about you, about your thesis, about your life. Please don't quote professional questions in total. That means what others have questions in a thesis, what others have developed question here in their works. Don't put it in total. Translate it, convert it as if you are claiming it as your own. For example, no. I think, for example, the author X in his book, questions are found, quote unquote, use. No, it is observed from the article published by X that more important. That means his observation, you have internalized his, his observation and putting it your own, own, own things. That is important. Any question? Be sure reader can understand your concepts and flow. Flow must be there. Good flow from the page one to last page must be there. While selecting a title, please, please try to avoid too broad or too narrow title. Actually, I had a slide. Just as I finished my uh, talk with this slide, this is a defense of a thesis. Before submitting, you have to defend your thesis at the presence of an academic gathering. No. Before some pre mission, viva, that is called. So you have to have pre mission process before submitting your thesis. So that is a long talk in a small conference, no? Only a few 15, 10, 12, 20 people will be there. So you have to give a long talk in a small conference. But the audience is scholarly. And the question will be scholarly question. That is not a long, huge gathering, very small uh, gathering, but scholarly people and scholarly question. 
at that presentation during time of before submission during you have finished your thesis you are giving appearing uh, for pre submission after pre submission within 6 months general release after pre submission within 6 months you have to submit your thesis the points you should or one should scholar should remember they make make it sure that you did it be positive be affirmative and be sure what you have done in process what you have done and make sure understanding the significance on the context what you have did for the significance of your things and two three points are there read it and finally before appearing before presenting please practice please practice that is important many times because you, because most of the scholars are not habituated to talk in scholarly gatherings that is there they are for the first time or second time or third time they are presenting their, their thesis so please practice how will talk 15 minutes what will talk if your time is given to you 20 minutes what will talk what important points you should mention with this uh let me say thank you and all the best for your summation thank you all